Welcome to the Salamander 3D demo, when I, where I describe useful things you can do with the Salamander 3D project editor. Uh, in this demo, I'm going to explain uh, more advanced concepts uh, and go into the architecture a little bit and show some advanced controls. Now, Salamander itself is actually quite a small engine. Um, it gains most of its power by loading plugins. Uh, it uh, does this through the Java services technique. Um, so even though the engine itself is rather small, when it starts up, it will look through its class path uh, to find uh, special services files. A service file is a uh, text file that's stored in the uh, meta inf directory of, uh, of a jar, and that contains uh, a list of uh, fully, qualified domain, fully qualified names to uh, other Java classes. Uh, these classes, in this case, are factories that contain information about uh, views, uh, about nodes, and even about the commands that you see in these drop-down menus. Uh, the Salamander will then assemble all that and add them piece by piece to the overall editor. Uh, this way you can uh, make dynamically change the um, dynamically change what Salamander is able to do and you're also able to uh, create custom nodes that you can add to the project. In fact, this is going to be the par important part of a development cycle because you're going to first use uh, Salamander to create uh, simpler objects such as uh, if you're going for a video game, characters in a video game or maybe uh, rooms and uh, then you're going to assemble them uh, once you've created the individual class files for your original components you're going to have now larger components you can work with which will then use the same editor to assemble into even larger and more complex uh, super components. Well, uh, let us start off by, uh, let me demonstrate one such component. I am going to load a GIS uh, terrain And here you can see it. This is taking uh, GIS data from the US Geological Survey. And notice as I rotate the camera, the uh, tessellation changes. This is because uh, this special component um, not only uh, takes the terrain elevation data, but it also takes location of the camera, uh, of one specific camera, and tessellates according to that particular view. This way, you can throw out a lot of data and render your scene very quickly. If I were to naively draw every single height sample here, this would actually be a very slow demonstration. But as you can see, by having an adaptive mesh, this actually displays quite quickly. Now, uh, enough of that. Let's go on to another example where I can show even more complex components. Okay, in this scene, you see an even bigger uh, GIS data set. And notice it's still very quickly because it still renders very quickly because um, it. Well, uh, because it's throwing out a lot of uh, data that's unimportant to the scene. This blue thing up here is a uh, B spline. Uh, this is made up of many small Bezier components, as B splines are. Let's open some new views. Uh, what we're going to do in this demo is create a uh, object which is able to run around the ground following the path uh, that we is laid out by this B spline. Now let's open up that scene graph so we can see the whole thing. And let's create a new cube primitive. I zoomed out to see the whole scene. And here's a cube that was just added at the bottom. So let's uh, focus in on that. There it is. Now notice that this cube was created at the very center of our scene. It's uh, well away from the uh, scene data up there. 
Now what we'd like to do is we'd like to be able to move that cube so that it is right close to that um, to the B spline. And notice when I selected the B spline it also highlighted it in the scene graph because it is a 3D selectable component. Well we can uh, bind the cube that we created uh, to the uh, B spline up here by creating a motion path. Now a motion path um, is a special component that takes a curve and uh, adjusts the transform coordinates of a transform node. In order to uh, make the motion path work we have to have a curve as input and let's swap that over and we also need to have a target object so we're going to target the transform of that cube going to connect the driven to the driver and now instead of the cube being down here if we focus in on that we can see it's been added to the motion curve to the motion path now that's kind of small and hard to see so let's adjust the size of that cube first let's create a new transform node now notice that transform node was added beneath the initial node that we had selected now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the mesh revealer which is what uh, shows the geometry in the scene and I'm going to place it below that transform node so there we are again you can still see it now let's edit that transform we can scale it by clicking and dragging that yellow node there and also by we can scale on a single axis by just using one of these pointed ones there we go now let's actually see it uh, animate on the path we can select the motion path then bring up the parameters now what we want to do is modify the distance now we can do that simply by typing in a number but for animated projects it's often easier to click and drag if I middle click and drag with the middle mouse button you can see it slides nicely along the path this is really useful for getting an intuitive sense of where to put something I can also change the granularity of that slide by uh, changing my scaling factor now when I slide it goes much slower so I have much more control well that's good for animating something along a path and if you're to do it if you're doing a camera fly through or something similar to that uh, this would be uh, a great this would be all you'd need however we want to have something that runs along the ground so we can do that by adding a new cube primitive and there it is down there and we're also going to add a fall to earth node this is another complex node which uh, salamander found uh, by uh, examining its plugins uh, by examining the uh, services of published by different jar files uh, and there's fall to earth right there now fall to earth is similar to motion path it uh, requires several connections to uh, calculate its data Okay, uh, first it needs a terrain, so let's select that and make that connection. Next it needs a reference node. It needs to know uh, from what point of view it needs to fall, or from what reference point it needs to fall. So let us select the uh, driven node from our, uh, from our traveling node here. It's going to fall from this point here. So we are going to link that one up as a reference point.
There we go. All right. Finally, we need to have a node uh, that is uh, that is going to be rendered. Uh, we need to have the driven node. So that's going to be the node we created down here. You can press F to focus on it, which right now is way down near the origin of our scene. Now, if I load that into the right pane, now when I connect the driven to the driver, all of a sudden it's hopped over there. There we go. And as we can see, it's uh, nicely on the ground. And if I bring up the motion path again, you can see as we change that motion path, the cube will also slide along the ground. Now that's great, but it'd also be neat to have a camera following that path as it travels on the ground. Well, we can do that by adding another camera to our scene. First, let's click on that transform that uh, surrounds our uh, cube on the ground, and let's create a camera. see the camera has appeared underneath uh, the transform node of this node here. Let's change the name of that camera. Now what we can do is actually adjust the way that camera looks by using the uh, built-in camera controls. That's uh, 3D World and we're going to switch to the cube cam we just created and you can see uh, because cube cam is selected that's why uh, that no mo that thing is moving around uh, let's click on the cube so we can focus on it so the camera has uh, just changed so that's focusing on the cube so there we are and just camera control so that we can uh, follow behind nice behind the cube and now, when we uh, select the motion path and edit it, the camera follows our cube. And that is how to create complex behavior by adding uh, dynamic nodes to a salamander 3D project.